Really, really cool stuff here. So the moral of the story is how do you manage Performance Max? Well, you don't use TCP and TROAS if you're trying to scale or trying to continue learning. That's just a good general goal. What's really interesting about this is it has less to do with the actual bidding strategy and more to do with the actual activity inside of a Performance Max campaign when it has more or less budgets when you don't have a target. What happens is it actually started to fall out of stock on some items. And since I knew that, the normal reaction a person would do is switch this over to maximize conversion value and stick T row as on a 300%. Um, which is good, but what you're going to do is stop all the learning from the new people. You can actually pull back on the learning of new people and kind of go back to where you wanted it to go while still keeping the learning element by simply reducing the budget. If you're using e-commerce and you want to use maximize conversion value, what that's going to do is when you pull back on that ad spend, it tries to maximize conversion value. What does it do? It has less views. It has less uh uh, clicks on display. It has less clicks on discovery. It's sacrificing exploratory ad spend to save on ROAS. Hey everyone, it's John here with Solutions 8. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about a topic that a lot of people ask me about on uh, YouTube lives or just clients in general. And it's actually how and when and should we use a TCPA or how to increase or how to manage the ROAS in a performance max campaign specifically. And what's really interesting about this is it has less to do with the actual bidding strategy and more to do with the actual activity inside of a performance max campaign when it has more or less budgets when you don't have a target. So it's very interesting is there's going to always be a slight lag, but what is good is that the lag is actually a readjustment uh, of the proper channel to achieve the goal. Whether that be, I could find more sales with less budget on search, but if I have more budget, I could find possibly more long tail uh, sales on YouTube. So when you increase budget, sometimes you see a lag in that dip in row. As when you back off that budget, sometimes you see a spike in conversions. And it's really odd because you're like, well, how does less money equal more conversions? And how does more money equal less conversions? It actually has to do with what you're asking the campaign to do. It has a fine point, it has a median that it likes to stay about. And if you add budget, it says, okay, I'm gonna still make those sales and I'm gonna to start to explore on GSP and on YouTube and on Discover and on Display. And you're gonna see a lag there. Your row is gonna dip because you're spending more money and you're not finding those sales yet, but then sales will start to come in. This is if you're not using a T row as a TCPA. Now, if you're having a good even keel and maybe you start to fall out of stock on some items and you need to save some row as well, actually, if you pull back at that ad spend a bit, it says, okay, well, I'm just gonna hone in on the areas that I can maximize the conversions or maximize the conversion value. I'm gonna to stick to my core group of channels that's working. It might be search and shopping and dynamic remarketing on display. So what you're actually doing is you're not trying to pre-qualify the user with TCP or TROAS, which is what it typically does. You're actually asking Google to become less or more efficient in the short term with the budget. So here's how this works. And you're going to see um, some blur here, uh, but just know that these two campaigns are a performance max. This is a DSA campaign and this is a brand campaign. And now we're going to see in the last seven days for about the same money, you know, negative seven, negative six, we had a 24% loss in conversions and 23% loss in conversions. Well, 23.99. So it's basically 24. What happens is it actually started to fall out of stock on some items. And since I knew that the normal reaction a person would do is switch this over to maximize conversion value and stick T row as on a 300%, um, which is good. But what you're going to do is stop all the learning from the new people. You can actually pull back on the learning of new people and kind of go back to where you wanted it to go while still keeping the learning element by simply reducing the budget. So what's interesting is I did that on the 23rd. <clears throat> no, sorry, I did on the 24th. Um, so let's see how the 25th compared to the 24th did. You'll see a pullback of 25% here and you'll see a pullback of 23%. You're going to see 40% more sales here and 20% more sales here. So how did 23% cost reduction equal a 46% increase in conversions and a 43% increase in conversion value? Normally what you say is, well, if you have 23% less spend here and maybe you have like 5% less uh, conversions and 8% less conversion value, but the ROAS actually went up by 86%. So what's interesting about this is my ROAS went up 80% and up 26%. I made more sales with less ad spend. Why? The best way to monitor and, and, and control a PMAX campaign is not by pre-qualifying the user. You're, you're hindering what PMAX was designed to do. This engine is designed to find people. If you put a T-ROAS or TCPA on Performance Max and you're trying to learn, grow, and scale or maintain a level of efficiency that's that's proper, it needs to use those channels like display, like YouTube, like GSP, like Discover, like 
inbound cold traffic search shopping. All of those channels need to identify a person. And when you add a T row as on, it says, no, 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 don't spend money on that person, no matter what channel it is, because we're not sure if that person is going to buy. So also you see a slight decay over time. So when you leave T row as off or TCPA off, and if you're using e-commerce and you want to use maximize conversion value, what that's going to do is when you pull back on that ad spend, it tries to maximize conversion value. What does it do? It has less views. It has less uh, uh, clicks on display. It has less clicks on discovery. It's sacrificing exploratory ad spend to save on ROAS by readjusting that same money towards the channels that it knows good conversions come in all the time, like probably search with, you know, obviously that's DSA. And then you have shopping and some dynamic remarketing. It's going to kind of double down on the people that it knows is going to, is going to convert and it actually uses that budget more effectively. So by pulling back, and when I always say on my YouTube lives, I say every single time, it's like, would you use a TCPA? How would you manage to ROAS? You manage it by daily ads, but you do not manage it by TCPA and T ROAS. It's not the best way to learn. You can short term, then you find yourself kind of dug into a hole a little bit further, and then it takes longer to get out of because then you're just one day, you're gonna have to turn it off and relearn on a new audience. And that is where ROAS dips. But a safe bet is to pull back on that ad spend the ROAS will adjust. You're going to hit above goal. Hang tight there until you see that actually is not declining. It's, it's holding stable and having a good positive ROAS. Like if I keep the same performance as I did yesterday for the next week, I'm going to crank that budget back up. Why? Because it's learned who it can target. Why? Because it didn't restrict it from learning like you would with TCP and T ROAS. So this is a very good way to, to see that budget pull back. I'm going to share with you another, uh, another campaign because I just thought of it. I'm going to pause this video here and you're going to see the screen kind of just like come back when I'm sharing another, another account. Just give me one minute because I want to keep everyone's information confidential and I will be right back. This is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you want to work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com, to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Okay. So we're back on another client. Now you're going to see on the top left, the attribution model is going to be blurred on the top, right? The client's name is going to be blurred here as well. So I want to protect the client, but this is not a high spending account. So I want to make sure that people don't just look at like high spend accounts and be like, well, John Moran's campaign works when you have 10 grand a day. Um, I want to do this with a lower spending account because it's very important to see what actually happens and when. So for this client here, we noticed that their Facebook was not really attributing to really good return on ad spend. And their Google is doing a little bit too much remarketing of some not so quality Facebook traffic. So what ended up happening is we pulled back on Facebook and we spike cost in Google. So you see Facebook had a reduction of 37% and Google had an increase of 42%. Now, actually, let me pause the video just one more second. I gotta make one setting, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm back. I had to show the brand name so I can change the attribution model. This is the click and views. So how many people viewed an ad on Google um, and converted on Google and how many people viewed an ad on Facebook that may have converted on Google. It's given that attribution back to Facebook. So the numbers here in the last seven days, you'll see 0.99 and 1.43. ROAS was not that great. YouTube is actually starting to kick up now. So what's interesting is when we started to spike spend on Google, we actually saw a reduction in revenue. Why? Well, because we started to spend more in the cold traffic and that was outside of what the recurring users on Facebook were driving that Google was doing too much remarketing of. Now, what this is going to do is the exact opposite of what we talked about. When we pull back and, and revenue spikes up, when you push forward, revenue spikes down a bit. Why? Because we burned through that audience already. And now we're going to find cold traffic, especially when we've removed the filler, which was Facebook. So that was what we did the last seven days. Now, this has been working for about a week now. So let's see the last three days. The last three days is going to be really, really interesting. What we're seeing here is now Google is starting to spike up in spend and it's also spiking up in revenue and spiking up in MER. And on the Facebook side, it's uh, sorry, on the YouTube side, it's also spiking up in spend. It's also spiking up in revenue at even a three X return. Now, what is going on? Well, Facebook started to pull back. That's good. Facebook started to pull back. They're doing more remarketing. 
So the remarketing, what they're doing is actually remarketing the new Google traffic that Performance Max is driving. So Google started to find new audiences. Where was it finding audiences? We saw it was finding audiences on Facebook, it's, uh, on YouTube. Let me restart this part here. Uh, don't edit it out. Just, let's just keep rolling with it. Google started to spike up and find new audience. Where did we see Performance Max finding audiences? We found them on YouTube. Why? While we were looking at the views were going up, the the overall conversions were going up inside the view-through conversions, we saw that the view rate was good. We saw a big click-through rate. So we said, okay, YouTube is working better. The global sum of conversions was greater than the combined search and shopping inside of Performance Max, which means it had to be GDN. YouTube was the only thing that we saw spiking up in terms of really, really good uh, engagement. So that's why we started a YouTube campaign and started to, to spike it up. So we see that now collectively you have a spend that is Google, which is performance max and YouTube combined total having a greater than um, result inside of uh, Google, which then Facebook started remarking them as well. And that started having a good result. So now our MER is up 175%. This is all cash in and all cash out for the business. 860 in spend, 2700 return, Facebook and uh, Google and YouTube are working together now, Facebook doing more remarketing, Google driving more cold traffic in the last three days, whew, overall MER has now gone up to 314%. So we're looking at omni-channel, but also why a singular channel may look bad. What it's doing is it's warming up that audience. If you start to add budget and see ROAS dip, don't panic and pull back. It's gathering that new audience. Keeping TCP and T ROAS off though, what you're doing is you're actually starting to get new users to the site that will convert that even Facebook can help remarket. Really, really cool stuff here. So the moral of the story is how do you manage performance max? Well, you don't use TCP and T ROAS if you're trying to scale or trying to continue learning. That's just a good general golden rule. Now there's always going to be exceptions to this rule, but for the most part, keep it off. The other part is how is it using the uh, users from Facebook? Is it good or is it bad? Well, if you're spiking spend and dropping spend in Facebook and keeping Google and, and YouTube the same and your ROAS, your global ROAS, your MER being the efficiency ratio of your business stays about the same, it may not be really having a good effect. But if you can turn it into a remarketing engine rather than a cold traffic engine, you can go after more cold traffic on YouTube and on performance packs and you're measuring it appropriately and giving it enough time, you're going to see that resurgence come back. This company in the last three days has a you know a 175% a, a increase in their global cash in, cash out. Um, now they're only spending $860 every three days. So it's not, again, not a $20,000, $30,000 per month account, but the same rules apply to that one client that was spending, you know, $1,000 a day to a person that's spending a thousand, uh, you know, $2,000 or $3,000 a week. So two different level spends, same core principles. I manage the campaigns without T Rose and without TCPA because I don't want to restrict the top of funnel traffic that it can get on its own. So I know it's probably complicated. I know it may be hard to follow, but hopefully someone uh, learned something out there one day. Uh, and please, you know, give us a, a, a subscribe on YouTube. It helps the algorithm. If you want to give us a thumbs up or drop us a comment and say, John, I don't know what you said, but it was fun while we were here. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye. So there's two other bidding strategies that I want to talk about, which is target CPM, target cost per milli, and target CPV, target cost per, or cost per view. Now, the funniest thing is, Sometimes you can't use these in certain campaigns. 